the angels and noble titans to Mary, and she will see by the Holy Ghost. Now may the grace and all to thee, blessed are far more women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it thou unto me according to thy words. Now may the grace and all to thee, blessed are far more women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Now may the grace and all to thee, blessed are far more women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. All forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we become to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In tuoi volatari Dei, et den tu vita, et in tutti mei. Mi vita me Dei, te vicino a casa, mei, presente non sancti, Amen. 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 Spiritus Deus, quod in humanae, quod in visis quaesis in terum, non vivi bene in vis. Et in nubi al tuo humilitato, in tuo humilis, in tuo terum, in tuo terum, opi monti, in sancti, in tuo mei, stanno davanti alla tua. Et in tuoi volontari Dei, et in tuoi principi da Dio, in tutti mei. Comte e motivi in cita, et in steus meus, quod Christus ai mamma, et quod in tuo mei, mei. Sveni del fuori mei, comte e deus ai bultus mei, et deus mei. Gloria Patri e Filio e Spirito e Santo, sit in ena fin principio e non te fede, et in secula seculorum amen. In tuoi volontari Dei, ai Dei in principio di un tutti mei, al tuo nome nostro, in nome di Domini, in cui fece il cielo e terra. Confido da lui per te, in Dio, e Maria, e tu vivi, e Dio, 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 Christ, 
ein Sober bist, et un Spirito tuo. Orde. Deus, que beatum Wenceslaum per martiri paula terreno principatu a celestum gloriam testu visti, eius precibus nostra boni e precipati custodi, et eius credus recio e cadere consorcio. Per domino nostro Iesu Christum Filio tu, qui tecum vive regna et militati spiritus sancti dei, per mia secula seculorum. Amen. Orde. A conti so Christum sonne medite populis defendit ediculi, et decidente beati glorios et sempre vietre et ege vestice e Maria, non beatum iosi e beati che possis tu spetre e trovo tuoi beati put mani tui figli e domi tu santi, salute e nobis tui tuoi venius e pace, mutis luxi sacrificati vos e gloria vos e me vesti, che crese tui futuri tu di serve e abilitate, e crese e tuoi Christum sonne preci tuo capi sacrite, o distruzzi sacrificati, tu sei di gloria, tu sei di investi, se colui tu di serve e predicate. Per l'obbligo nostro, di Gesù Cristo, un figlio in tu, che te e tu vive regna la Trinità di Spiritus Santi Dei, per la mia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexo Libri Sapio. Justum in deduzzi, Dominus per vias recta, et erostendi di lì regum Dei, et ei di scienziam sanctorum, Onistalvi tirum in laboribus e cum tebe labore filius, in prodice convenientium, tinum a tui tiri, e ponestum feci tiri. Gusto tibi tinum ad inimici, se de sanctorvi plus putanti tinum, e cetamen pote tebi tiri, ut vincere et cere, quodiam omnium potentio et sapientia. Eg venti cum iustum onde reliquit, se de peccatoribus liberabit tebe, se scipique cum inum in fovia, ma cum vincere is onde reliquit tinum, Ogni che fere ti distetto un regni e potente ma che è su tenis. Tui che onde prevevant, e mandacci san stendit, qui matura vero tinum, ed editi di caritatem eternam, Dominus Deus nostra. Deo gratias. Leatus vir quiti me Dominum, e mandacci te us putitinis, potent in cara eris te benedius, e relezio rectorum benedicetio. Alleluia, alleluia! Os visti Domini super capo Deus, coronum del labio de prezioso, Alleluia. In nome del suo avviso, e con il Spirito tuo, sequenzio santi Vangeli, secondo Matteo. Gloria a te, Vidomi. E nello tempo re dissi di Gesù, discepoli sui, Noi dite a vitrarvi che a pacem venere mitem in terra, non veni pacem mitem e se tragium. Veni erim stefanarum e hominum et versus patrum suum, et filiam et versus matrum suum, et nurum et versus sopram suum, et in mici homini stemistici eus. Qui am et patrum am patrum tus quam me, non es me dignus. Et qui am et filium am filiam super me, non es me dignus. Et qui non ecipi et crucem suum et sequetur me, non es me dignus. Qui in venit animam suam terri dilam, et qui petit erit animam suam prote me, in veni et eam. Qui recipit vos me recipit, et qui me recipit, recipit eum, qui me nisit. Qui recipit profeta, me nomine profete, me cede profete acipie, et qui recipit iustum in nomine iusti, me cede un iusti acipie. Et qui cumque potum detedit muni ex inimis visus tante maque frigide et tante me nomine discipuli. Amen di globobis. Non pendet me cedem sua. Laus, Chievi Christi. On this feast of Saint Wenceslas, Duke of Bohemia and Martyr, the lesson is taken from the Book of Wisdom. The Lord guided his faithful servant straight to his goal, and on the way showed him the heavenly kingdom, gave him knowledge of holy things. He enriched him by his toil, and gave all his labours a happy issue. Knavery went about to get the better of him, but the Lord stood by him and prospered him, kept him safe from his enemies, protected him from their scheming. He would have him wrestle manfully and prove that there is no strength like the strength of wisdom. When the innocent man was sold for a slave, wisdom did not desert him, did not leave him in the hands of his persecutors, but went down with him into his dungeon. 
fast was he bound, but she had not finished with him till she gave him dominion over a whole kingdom and power to do what he would with his persecutors. So she brought home the lie to those who traduced him, and the Lord our God granted him, granted him everlasting fame. And the Holy Gospel is the continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not imagine that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have come to bring a sword, not peace. I have come to set a man at variance with his father, and the daughter with her mother, and the daughter-in-law with her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the people of his own house. He is not worthy of me that loves father or mother more. He is not worthy of me that loves son or daughter more. He is not worthy of me that does not take up his cross and follow me. He who secures his own life will lose it. It is the man who loses his life for my sake that will secure it. He who gives you welcome gives me welcome too. And he who gives me welcome gives welcome to him that sent me. He who gives a prophet the welcome due to a prophet shall receive the reward given to prophets. And he who gives a just man the welcome due to a just man shall receive the reward given to just men. And if a man gives so much as a draught of cold water to one of the least of these here, because he is a disciple of mine, I promise you, he shall not miss his reward. How many for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are far among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for our God sinners God now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Caris, my beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass. On this, this feast of St. Wenceslas, Duke of Bohemia and Martyr. Now, this is indeed, for those of you who may be wondering, the very same Wenceslas who is referred to in the famous Christmas carol that is usually sung traditionally on Boxing Day or St. Stephen's Day. Good King Wenceslas last looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even. Wenceslas, uh, again, so contrary to what many people uh, assume or think or are ignorant, like uh, St. George, St. Wenceslas was a real person, an actual flesh and bones person, and he was, uh, though not a king, strictly speaking, <coughs> uh, an equivalent to a king, he was a royal duke, a duke of Bohemia, uh, and uh, ruled uh, a kingdom, ruled the kingdom of Bohemia, uh, in the 10th century, uh, his um, uh, grandmother, uh, Sulumila, uh, was his uh, constant uh, friend and great mentor. Uh, when his father died, uh, his um, uh, mother uh, kind of uh, uh, took control of the country as regent uh, until, was presumably uh, to rule until uh, he came of age. But... Uh, she was reluctant to give up that power, uh, so that uh, Wenceslas found himself uh, at odds uh, with both his mother and indeed his brother Boroslav. Boroslav, um, though had nominally was nominally a Christian, uh, because he desired the power to rule himself, had sided with uh, the pagan element uh, within the country. At the same time, too, they, uh, there was a, a great... Um, uh, anxiousness or great angst we might say in the country uh, concerning the relationship with uh, uh, Austria and Hungary. Um, Bohemia, for those of you uh, perhaps uh, unfamiliar with the term as it's not uh, generally used these days, is what we would now call Czechoslovakia. And at various times uh, Czechoslovakia had been, uh, or, or Bohemia had been a sort of vassal state uh, to the uh, uh, Austrians uh, and uh, the, the Hungarians. <coughs> but, um, Wenceslaus did his best uh, to uh, keep peace uh, between the nations, uh, but this, of course, uh, was not popular, uh, again, with the pagan nationalists uh, who wanted, to, uh, who wanted uh, the country to um, conquer, uh, be at war uh, with its neighbours. However, Wenceslaus uh, persisted uh, in his policies and of course uh, was greatly loved and deeply followed by the vast majority in the country because of his deep Christian faith and because of his deep Christian witness. Uh, as the carol uh, suggests to us, 
uh, he was uh, known uh, to be generous uh, toward orphans and widows and the poor, and on his own shoulders he did frequently carry uh, wood uh, to the houses of the needy. He often attended the funerals of the poor, indeed often paid for them, he paid ransoms for captives, and he visited those suffering in prison. He was filled with a deep reverence for the clergy and with his own hands sowed the wheat for making the altar breads and pressed the grapes for the wine used in the holy sacrifice of the mass. Often during winter he would visit the churches barefoot through the snow and ice, not seldom leaving behind bloody footprints. He said that angels were protectors of his person. However, as we said, uh, despite uh, uh, or in spite of the Christianizing efforts uh, of Wenceslas, Boleslav, uh, his Boleslav, his, his uh, uh, brother, led a pagan element uh, that caused factions within the kingdom. Uh, a a um, summit was arranged. Um, uh, Boleslav uh, invited Wenceslas uh, to keep some of the Christmas feast with him. Uh, sorry, no, that's not right. Uh, Boleslav uh, invited Wenceslas to observe the feast of Saints Cosmos and Damien uh, with him, and uh, believing the uh, sincerity of his brother's motives, uh, Wenceslas went, uh, but sadly uh, a row uh, um, in discussions, uh, a row, an argument broke out, and supporters, pagan supporters of Boleslav uh, killed um, Wenceslas. And for that, of course, and for his deep Christian witness, he was hailed almost immediately uh, as a martyr. As he said that um, it was on his way to Mass that Wenceslas uh, was set upon uh, by the supporters of um, Boleslav, his brother. May God forgive you, brother, is to, are said to be his last words as his brother appeared on the scene. Here then we see in the life of Wenceslaus one who again extols the virtues uh, and the uh, attitude and approach to life that we as Christians, all of us, should have and have been reflecting on the last couple of days. Here, for example, we hear one who indeed clothed the naked, gave drink to the thirsty, uh, who fed the poor, who visited the sick, who visited those imprisoned, and indeed who welcomed and gave hospitality to the stranger, even to those of even to those who were his enemies. We see here one who even turned the other cheek. We see here one who was prepared to forgive his brother seventy times seven. We see here one who <laughs> One who, though some would say perhaps ultimately lost because he was martyred, nonetheless uh, achieved wondrous and great things such that the paganizing influences of Boleslav and his uh, friends did not prevail and Bohemia indeed Czechoslovakia became a great Christian nation. And that, of course, is the testimony. Indeed, however uh, cute we might think uh, the Christmas carol, Gulking Wenceslas, that in itself is a testimony uh, to the witness of this saint. Though, of course, uh, the carol is uh, presumed to be written around the 19th century, nonetheless, the fact that Wenceslas's name, just like those, of Cosmos and Damien and Cyprian and Justina and all the others that we regularly uh, commemorate in the liturgical seasons uh, cycle of the year prove to us, demonstrate to us the power and the effect and the impact that lived charity, that lived sacrificial love has. Love does not die, even though these individuals died, even though these individuals indeed 
in, in any other circumstance, we would perhaps even suggest that they had lost, because they lost their earthly lives. Nonetheless, their charity lived on, and their names were associated with that charity. Their charity, we might say, lasted and guaranteed their posterity. As we reflected yesterday, we should hope, my brothers and sisters, that we ourselves might be remembered for charity. We might ask ourselves, at this moment now, if I were to die tomorrow, what would I be remembered for? <coughs> Who would I be remembered by? For what would my life be celebrated? Whom would be grateful for the witness and the testimony of my life? And if we are unsure, if we are uncertain, then motivated by selflessness, we might seek to redress the balance. We might determine to more deliberately manifest sacrificial love in our lives. Not really for the sake of the, of the posterity of our name, but so that charity would indeed survive, that charity would indeed be passed on. For that, my brothers and sisters, is ultimately the witness of the sacrificial love demonstrated by the martyrs. Is not only did their names survive, not only was charity attributed to their names, connected with their names, but also too it was because of their charity. And charity begot charity, love begot love. It was ultimately love that continued because of the love that they had practiced in their lifetime love that had inspired others, love that had brought others to faith, love that had changed and transformed the lives of others. We never know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes quite the influence or the impact our lives can have on others. And so often, so many of us perform some act of kindness, perhaps even just a smile to a stranger that would seem to us to mean nothing at all, but to that individual might make their day. A person perhaps suffering with anxiety, a person perhaps who lives in a lonely existence, Perhaps someone who is afraid or fearful, someone who is shy. Perhaps someone who just over the checkout counter in the supermarket, while our eyes meet and we simply pass a, an acknowledging smile. That can have a supreme effect on someone who is struggling with life, who is lonely in life. The same is true, of course, of those who live on our streets, whom so many people walk past and ignore. For many of them, irrespective of their need for money, most would appreciate simply being acknowledged as a human being. The word simply of greeting can make the whole difference in a day of being ignored. We should never, my brothers and sisters, underestimate the power of a word like that can have an impact. Imagine then what deliberate charity can do. And clearly has done. For none of us, my brothers and sisters, 
would be here now as Christians were it not for the deep impact of charity, of lived and manifested charity by the saints throughout the centuries, by Christians in each succeeding generation. And we should hope, my brothers and sisters, in our lifetimes to continue, to continue that powerful effect of charity to those around us. And indeed with the prospect and the potential for the continuance of that divine charity, of that sacrificial love to reach future generations even after we have gone. And remember, my brothers and sisters, that it is ultimately that same charity which grants us our salvation, which enables us to have the hope that we have for the kingdom of God and the new heaven and the new earth and eternal life with Jesus Christ. In the Gospel today, we are reminded once again by our Lord, as we reflected yesterday and many times before, of the real cost of discipleship. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And we cannot, my brothers and sisters, love our neighbour as we would love ourselves if we do not fulfil the first commandment. This today is so much the issue, presenting issue for the church, that so many of us think it is enough to be kind to others. It is not enough simply to be kind. We must love as Jesus loves us. We must love as God loves us. We must love sacrificially. Sometimes we must love even to a fault. Just as God loves us despite our sins, just as God continually loves us despite our sins, despite sometimes the half-heartedness of our love for him. So when we talk about realising who we are, restoring and perfecting the image of him within us, it is all and only possible, but can be accomplished through the manifestation and living of sacrificial love. Let us, my brothers and sisters, determine to put God first, to put his commandments, to put his laws, to put sacrificial living for him as the pattern of our living, that we may then truly love as he desires us to love others. We said yesterday, and we have said previously, it is not enough just to throw a bit of money at a charitable cause. It ought to cost us, and it ought not to cost that, as it were, which is inanimate and which ultimately has no meaning, such as money. But it ought to cost us something of our lives, something of our living, something of our being. It should involve our labour, it should involve our sweat, it should involve our touch, it should be something tangible and real, it should be something experienced. what is love if it is not 
an experience. It's giving sacrificially of our time, our skills, our abilities means so much more than just giving of our money. Giving of our time, our skills and our abilities is to give of ourselves. And it is in that personal, experiential act and nature of sacrificial valour that hearts and minds may be altered and changed, lives transformed, souls converted. Because it is through that experiential love that God's love is made real. Remember, my brothers and sisters, that we are called to be instruments of God's will and God's will is that all should know his love for them. We are called to be his hands and his feet. We are called to offer ourselves to his service. We, my brothers and sisters, are the main tools by which God's love can be experientially known and realized and felt. For our faith is an incarnational faith. The balance of spirit and material. And it is by uniting ourselves to God's spirit and allowing him to use us our physical selves, that his love may be made manifest in our world. Faith is not just an intellectual exercise of assent. Faith is not just about a blind trust. Faith is not just an ideology or a philosophy. Christian faith is a lived way of life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Dominus Vaviscum, et cum Spirito Tuo. Amen. Gloria, et honore coronasti eum, et constituisti eum super opera malium tuam. Amen.
Mia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Susum corda. Habemus ad Dominum. Gracias ad Hamus Domino Deo nostro. Dignum ad Iusum. Et veri dignum ad Iusum. Et tecum et salutari nostri vicendere. Et dubito et grazie et agere. Et Domine et Sancte Pate. Omnipotente et Tenetens. Et Christum Dominum nostrum, pecum est statum cum laudum angeli adorant dominationis premus potestates, celi cerunque vetute e beatus serofim, socio sutazione concelpam, unquius et nostris voces ut et metiu veste e precamur, supplici confessione dicendo. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabena, Plena su cieli e terra gloria tua, osana in eccelsis. Benedictus vivere di nomine domini, osana in eccelsis.
Marcus Corti e Sergio Torti. Ece alius Dei, ece qui tolit peccatum. Un Domine non sentimio su vincere su tempo meo, se tanto di credo e se navi pur anima mea. Domine non sentimio su vincere su tempo meo, se tanto di credo e se navi pur anima mea. Domine non sentimio su vincere su tempo meo, 
Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Amen.
Wenceslas, Duke and Martha, pray for us. St. Catherine of Steny, pray for us. St. Wilfred of York, pray for us. St. Richard of Chichester, pray for us. St. Louisa of Alfriston, pray for us. Our Lady of Walsingham, pray for us. Our Holy Guardian Angels, pray for us. Our Heavenly Patron Saints, pray for us. Our Lady Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints, pray for us. Thank you. 